Welcome to Introduction to Community and Cultural Heritage. Thank you for joining in on this course. This will be the course for you if you want a more philosophically focused look into the tenets of heritage and how it is inextricably connected to you and your personal sense of identity. This course will examine the key principles involved in understanding cultural heritage by beginning with in-depth explanations of the foundations of cultural heritage what it is and how it is formed. As the weeks evolve, case studies will be brought in to illustrate these ideas through real world examples, specifically relating them to institutional bodies and forces that influence and affect the very structure and makeup of cultural heritage as it is understood today and how it is enacted within community settings. So as follows, the structure of this course will be broken up into six weeks of 20 to 30 minute lectures. Weeks one will be an introduction and week six will be a conclusion and weeks two to five will be introductory explanations followed by case study examples. So week one will be on what is community and cultural heritage, which will address the outline and meanings of community and cultural heritage, how these concepts will be explored and address the definitions of cultural heritage, the contemporary debates in the field and address what assignments will be brought up throughout this course. Week two will be on community memory, place and attachment and explore and explain this idea of how our heritage is attached to place identity memory. Uh, a case study will be brought in as the first case study to address how to do the examination at the final week of this course. And this case study will be on Jewish heritage and how we can understand and analyze our own personal ancestral ties and how these shape and affect our identity. Week three will be on historical narr narratives and memory scapes and will follow on from week two to be quite synonymous. This will look at how historical narratives and our heritage and ancestry shape our sense of community belonging in the present day. Week four will go into something quite different, into the issues of conserving and preserving community heritage. And this week will be looking further into the post-colonial heritage conservation for community heritage and will analyze institutional top-down actors that control and direct heritage value, such as UNESCO, the Borough Charter and ICOMOS. The case study for this week will look at the Duke and George Caves, which is an Aboriginal sacred site in Australia that was destroyed. And this case study will particularly highlight the issues in preserving intangible heritage, particularly in non-Western environments. Week five will go on to look at the idea of well-being in cultural heritage and how it can raise community happiness. This week we'll specifically look at the case study of a few different institutional frameworks and research that has gone into understanding the effects of implementing and practicing heritage within community settings. Week six will be a roundup of all the five weeks and look at how these case studies, theories and explanations and debates can be understood in the present day and shape your understanding of cultural heritage and community identity. The examination will consist of one major final essay due two weeks after the course ends, consisting of 1,000 words on the answer of choose one community and heritage you belong to and answer the questions, what community and heritage do you belong to? Does it enhance or impact your sense of well-being and how does it affect your sense of belonging, attachment and identity. The questions may be broken up into three and answered separately or you can turn them into one 
uh, fluid essay where you answer them all together. So for this week, the discussion topics will address the key questions of what is cultural heritage and how do we define community and cultural heritage. We'll also address the definitions in cultural heritage of tangible and intangible heritage, social significance and value, and also address cultural heritage current debates around post-colonialism, problems in recognizing intangible heritage, and looking at hegemonic institutional bodies such as UNESCO. So going into this week's material, we'll focus on a short and sweet approach to break down the questions, what is cultural heritage all about? And why and how is it related to our community and identity? To begin, it is important to firstly ask the most preliminary questions so we can work from there and build up an overview understanding of the basic tenets, principles and terminology used within heritage discourse. This question is simply put, what is heritage? Well, heritage is comprised of a range of inherited traditions, practices, objects, values and meanings that are drawn from and make up a culture. Conserving heritage includes excavating, preserving, restoring, and displaying it. Heritage is important to society and our global world because it helps us draw upon our past to understand our present and future, which in turn help us evolve as a collective society. Heritage acts as a cornerstone to represent society, affecting the production of politics, policies, business, and our own worldview. Heritage acts as a sounding board for our culture and future cultures to relate to and respond to their own personal views on the world. So, by the act of conserving and preserving heritage sites and practices, we are keeping a memory of ourselves alive for future generations to learn from, interpret, understand and inherit. Now that definition is established, we can address the key principles that make up heritage so it may be recognized in society today. These being the idea of value, social significance, and intangible and tangible heritage. So to begin, tangible heritage and intangible heritage are terminology used in cultural heritage and are commonly used within heritage discourse. Tangible heritage refers to things that are physical to the touch, whilst intangible heritage refers to things that are not physical, but instead exist intellectually, symbolically, and narratively through story and myth. Intangible cultural heritage means the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, and skills embedded in objects, artifacts, and cultural spaces associated with communities, groups, and in some cases, individuals, who are recognized as a part of their cultural heritage identity. Tangible and intangible heritage have an interwoven relationship and can potentially become culturally relative and subjectively understood due to their lack of legal definitions and parameters of authority. Another important terminology used within heritage discourse is value and social significance. It is used within this discourse to differentiate what is deemed as heritage and what is not, and what is worthwhile heritage to conserve, preserve, and recognize, and what is not. Simply put, value in heritage discourse refers to the meaning and value of an individual or a group of people who bestow a heritage site or practice with value. Value in heritage is linked to defining and recognizing the cultural and social significance of heritage. This can be based on its aesthetic, historical, social, cultural, and scientific importance. The importance of things can be seen in museums and personal collections, architecture, archaeology, ecology, or expressions of culture, such as traditions, values, and practices. Heritage value has been defined as the meaning and value of an individual or a group of people who bestow a heritage site or practice with value. Although heritage comprises of a combination of natural and human factors, the value of heritage sites includes but is not limited to the aesthetic, historical, ethnographic and anthropological sites and traditions of value and practice. 
In summation, valuing heritage requires us to value the very fabric of a culture because it is what helps define and examine our personal histories and traditions, as well as those of alternative cultures. This enables a platform for the development of reflexivity and self-referential learning, allowing a questioning of why we are, the way we are, and who we are. The ideas of value and tangible and intangible heritage interject within heritage discourse and practice when a tangible or intangible heritage site and or practice is due to become recognized or granted social significance by an institutional heritage body, therefore acquiring it with heritage value. For example, to proceed with conservation, the value of cultural intangible and tangible heritage practices or sites has to be acknowledged. This is seen, for example, in the concerted efforts to conserve the Welsh language, which has played an impactful role in revitalizing a Welsh identity separate from the UK. Valuing cultural heritage, therefore, is important as it operates on a sociological level by both affecting and influencing the systems under which we gain normative knowledge about the way we are and how we should act, think and believe based on our cultural identity. However, this is not a simplistic process. And evidently, complexities arise when the relationship between tangible and intangible heritage sites and practices are not legally recognized and given rise to the potential of conflict due to the cultural value being relative and subjectively understood. This all brings about the question of how heritage affects and is interwoven within our own personal identity. Our heritage identity is something that may impact and affect what decisions we take in our everyday life based on customs, positions, ethics, morals and beliefs prescribed by our cultural ancestry and family legacy. As established, the cultural heritage of a nation or ethnic group has an impactful influence over our social and individual identity. Therefore, by conserving it through conservation methods and practices, we are enacting the preservation of our very own legacy. This act of self-preservation through heritage conservation is what helps give a sense of continuity to an ever-changing, expanding and globalizing world. As a global community, we recognize the importance of heritage conservation and to this end, global institutional bodies such as UNESCO have been set up to support conservation and preservation of valued heritage sites and practices. To achieve global significance as a heritage site of value, the National Heritage List must acknowledge and appoint it with a global status of outstanding heritage value to its micro or macro communities. UNESCO defines this as to determine whether a place has outstanding heritage values, it is compared to other similar types of places in order to be deemed a world heritage site. The location must have outstanding universal value, demonstrating international significance. It must transcend national boundaries and be of common importance for present and future generations of all humanity. For UNESCO to recognize the value of, her of a heritage site and practice, they must examine them in relation to their own guidelines, attitudes, and hegemonic and normative beliefs. Once recognized, then conservation and preservation of a financially substantive level can commence. Lastly, the conservation of a heritage site or a practice is an interdisciplinary effort and a mix of traditional knowledge and technique in combination with current and modern tools and efforts can be used. So to conclude, this week should have given you a solid outline and understanding of what cultural heritage is, the primary things that make up cultural heritage, including uh, value and intangible and tangible heritage, social significance and post-colonial and institutional bodies and actors that influence and direct the idea of heritage value. 
Next week, we will be looking at community memory place and attachment, and we'll use the ideas that we explored this week and those foundational understandings to go deeper into the more ephemeral and emotive aspects of community heritage that make up our cultural identity.